All right. Hello, and welcome to the Middle East Forum Speaker Webinar Series and Podcast. I'm Stacey Roman, and I will be moderating this discussion today. We are pleased to have Nasser Khadr, an author, academic, and former member of the Danish Parliament, a Middle East writing, a Middle East Forum writing fellow, a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, and CEO of Palmyra Cultural Tor Travels, join us to discuss making sense of Quran burnings in Sweden and Denmark. Mr. Cotter will speak for 15 minutes, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A from the audience. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I'll turn the discussion over to Mr. Nasser Cotter. Thank you for inviting me again. Before I start uh, a disclaimer, uh, I don't think the Quran burnings uh, can be compared to the Khartoum crisis in 2006. The Quran burnings in my own country, Denmark, and in Sweden, our neighboring country, are about something totally different. Not only about freedom of speech and expression, much more. First of all, it's about Sweden, Sweden's membership, membership of NATO. We know that the White House trying hard to convince Turkish Erdogan to approve Sweden joining the alliance. Secondly, it's about the new deal between US and the Saudis. It seems the US and Saudi Arabia have agreed on the outlines of a deal for Saudi Arabia to recognize Israel, a sort of a new Abraham Accord. To put it differently, the US does not want a new Khartoum crisis at this point in time. Too much is at stake for them. But that does not justify what is happening now in Denmark and Sweden. The first uh, Quran burnings was initiated by Russia to prevent the US to be uh, successful with uh, admitting Sweden to NATO and make an Abraham deal with the Saudis. We know that the first Quran burning incident in Stockholm uh, the capital of Sweden was uh, funded by a far-right journalist with links to Russia. So with that disclaimer in mind, I would like to introduce you to the proud tradition of freedom of speech in Denmark, but also why I strongly oppose bending to Islamic demands now, just like I did in 2006 when we in Denmark had the cartoon crisis. I want to take you back to 2001. In November 2001, I was elected to the Danish parliament uh, as the first with uh, an Arabic uh, background ever. And beside uh, some compliments of being a role model for immigrants in Denmark, I actually had an ordinary parliamentary career until the Khartoum crisis. Both my personal life and my career changed fundamentally because of the Khartoum crisis in many ways. It became my destiny. I have had uh, police protection uh, since uh, then. On September 30, 2005, a Danish newspaper, Jyllandsposten, printed 12 cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad which led to a global battle of values over the relationship between freedom of expression and uh, religion or religious uh, feelings. The 12 uh, cartoons were published because uh, several unnamed cartoonists have stated that they did not dare to draw pictures of the Prophet Muhammad. The drawings were combined by an article in which the editor explained the background of publishing the cartoons and added that in secular democracy and freedom of expression that uh, you have to be ready to accept insult, mockery and ridicule. The drawings uh, prompted uh, ambassadors from 11 Muslim countries to request a meeting with the Prime Minister Anas Rasmussen and to hold the newspaper responsible before the law. 
Of course, our then Prime Minister could not do that and replied with a reference to our constitution uh, that uh, guaranteed uh, freedom of speech. He said that the Danish government could and would not interfere with the free media. A number of imams uh, living in Denmark then traveled uh, to uh, different Islamic countries to spark uh, protests against Denmark and our freedom of speech. In my opinion, uh, their travel was uh, a sort of uh, treason uh, to Denmark. In weeks, the protests against Denmark grew uh, significantly. Saudi Arabia and Libya recalled their ambassadors to Denmark. Danish goods were boycotted, flags were burned, people assaulted and some uh, killed. Denmark was suddenly thrown into the worst foreign policy crisis since the, the Second World uh, War. In early 2006, Prime Minister Anders Fogh Rasmussen invited me to his office to get uh, my view on how the crisis could be ended. As I am born in Syria, Palestinian father, Syrian mother, I know what lack of freedom feels like, and therefore I have always been very aware that uh, freedom can disappear. I advised the Prime Minister not to apologize, but to stand, reform, uh, stand firm on of our right to defend the freedom of speech. I don't know if it was me who convinced, convinced him, but he did it uh, very firm. Despite uh, multiple terrorist uh, attacks, one of them deadly, huge uh, diplomatic uh, pressure from the OEC, uh, the Danish government stand uh, firm and refutes uh, demands to impose Islamic uh, blasphemy norms in Denmark. We uh, did not uh, compromise. Because we can't compromise on our fundamental rights, uh, values and traditions. If we start compromising, OEC will just want more. It never ends because the only thing Islamic leaders understand is power. It might have escalated the crisis, but it was the right thing to do. I believe to this day that this was the clash of values that Samuel Huntington had warned about in his book. And you only win this clash by standing firm on your beliefs. I recognize that Sweden is now in a different position than Denmark. It is outrageous that Sweden has not been allowed membership uh, of NATO like uh, Finland. Uh, honestly, I prefer Sweden in NATO than uh, Turkey. We should praise uh, Sweden for its strong, strong uh, democratic uh, institutions and uh, traditions not hold them against uh, Sweden. Sweden can and should become a member of NATO at the earliest opportunity, but Turkey has used the Quran burning uh, demonstrations uh, to stop Sweden to become member for now, just like uh, Putin wished for. But for Denmark, the situation is different. I have not been invited by the current uh, Prime Minister of Denmark for meeting like in 2006, but my experience tells me uh, that no government should bow to any uh, Muslim government or organization demanding a free country uh, compromises its freedom of speech. Unfortunately, two weeks ago, uh, the Danish uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Lars Lugge Rasmussen, announced uh, that the government will seek to enact legislation for, quote, special situations where other countries, cultures, and religions could be insulted, potentially resulting in significant negative consequences uh, for Denmark. Sweden are going to do uh, the same, uh, so sad. 
these uh, capitulations uh, have forced the two countries to debate how far we are willing to go to defend our freedoms in the face of violence and international backlash. Should we give up or give in just to get uh, peace uh, for now? Uh, no way, in my opinion. On the one hand, there are reasons to be critical to, of book uh, burnings. Uh, you should read books, uh, uh, not burn books, but it's part of freedom of expression to do that. It's not an act of hate. It's not Islamophobia. It's a part of uh, free uh, speech. Uh, some Arab media say so and accuse the Danish and the Swedish uh, governments for orchestrate uh, this Quran burning and it's a part of Islamophobia. But, but that's not uh, true. Those uh, very few individuals who do uh, that uh, are not uh, state agents and they are in opposition to the government. They are private individuals, individuals whose uh, nonviolent uh, expressions are intended to convey a message which, uh, however, offensive to those who disprove is part of uh, free speech. The violence uh, that accompanies uh, these uh, events uh, stems both from uh, uh, extreme uh, groups as well as from uh, counter protesters, protesters who insist that uh, religious uh, taboos can only be unfurst through mob intimidation and violence, but they are uh, mistaken. In July, two, two weeks ago, an Iranian citizen uh, living in Denmark uh, burned uh, the Danish and the Swedish uh, flags, as well as the Bible and the Torah in uh, front of the Israeli embassy in Copenhagen. And uh, same time, he praised the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini in the process. Uh, but uh, nobody cared about uh, this uh, attempt to provoke. Uh, no Danish uh, cared about it. No one used violence and the Iranian guy, he was not uh, arrested. So ra rather than demonstrating Danish hypocrisy, which was his goal, he managed to show how a free society committed to both uh, free speech uh, and tolerance can handle offensive ideas without uh, violence. So despite these and other demonstra uh, demonstrable uh, merits of free speech, the recent uh, steps uh, taken by uh, the Danish and Swedish uh, governments reveal a concerning trend, bowing uh, to intimidation from religious oppressive states sets a precedent and gives those leverage to, for, uh, to further undermine our free uh, principles and values. There are, uh, there are already also strong reasons to believe that the OEC will not be appeased by the proposed Danish and Swedish legal restrictions. The next day after the Danish government uh, promised to explore legal remedies against Quran burnings, the OEC uh, released a strongly worded uh, statement. Uh, they, wanted, they wanted more. The Turkish ambassador to Denmark also warned that the proposed Danish efforts were insuffic insufficient. In other words, uh, once the democracies uh, compromises on uh, principles, uh, authoritarian states will not respond with the uh, gratitude, but uh, demand uh, more. Uh, in my opinion, we make a huge mistake compromising our right to, to freedom of speech or limiting it based on the past uh, six weeks of protests on the streets uh, from diplomats and especially from an organization like OEC. Criticism from OEC does not justify compromising uh, freedom of speech in a democratic uh, country like uh, Denmark and Sweden. 
Yes, we see is the second largest intergovernmental organization in the world after UN, but OEC's political influence has always been limited. The member countries, uh, they don't agree on uh, anything else than being in opposition to the, to the West and the Western uh, values. So we are in a value struggle uh, globally with the OEC. OEC. The Danish and the Swedish governments has given OEC more power and more power uh, the last two weeks uh, than they uh, should give them. So let me put it clear, writing a book like Salman Rushdie did, uh, drawing cartoons like the cartoonist in Denmark did 20 years ago, or even burning a Quran, that's not a blasphemy. Uh, that's not hate speech. Uh, it's uh, criticism of uh, religion. And that's uh, part of uh, free expression. I'm uh, both uh, surprised and uh, saddened uh, that my own government and Swed the Swedish government intend to revise the criminal code or reintroduce some form of new blas blasphemy clause not because, because I fought to abolish the former blasphemy clause when I was a member of the parliament uh, in 2019. Uh, we did it. We, uh, we got rid of the blasphemy clause. And the reason was exactly that our blasphemy clause was used by Islamic uh, regimes to justify harassment and limit of uh, free speech. Last, uh, I just want to add that we can't compromise on the most important right we have, freedom of speech. Uh, freedom of speech is a difficult principle to uphold uh, consistently. Uh, governments and citizens of democracies alike are frequently tempted to sacrifice this principle when faced with threats. But the one only has to compare uh, the vibrant democracies of Denmark and Sweden to the authoritarian uh, regimes of uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia to realize that for all its uh, flaws, free speech makes uh, the world uh, more tolerant, more equal and, uh, and more free. Denmark and Sweden's, and Sweden's uh, defection uh, from the core liberal principle is a dark day for the global uh, fight uh, for free uh, speech. Freedom of speech always uh, searches for the truth while extremists say they know it. We simply have to start fighting for it. Abraham Accord or not, NATO membership or not, as uh, President Truman uh, said, uh, freedom is not free. Thanks. Thank you so much for that uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, so you mentioned that the um, the blasphemy clauses there at the end. What does the proposed blasphemy clauses for Denmark and Sweden contain? Uh, are they skewed towards any one religion or are they pretty non non-biased? Uh, we don't have it anymore, uh, the blasphemy clause in Denmark. We got rid of it in uh, 2019. Uh, before that, we didn't use it. I think uh, in 100, year, year, 100 years, we used it only once in the 30s. So it was, uh, we had it, but we didn't use it. And when we, uh, as a member of, I was the chairman of the Defense Committee and the member of the Foreign Committee, when we met with the Pakistanis, uh, uh, member of parliament, and asked them uh, to get rid of the blasphemy law, uh, which killed a lot of Christians in Pakistan, they told us, you have it. So that's what my, uh, uh, that's what I used to, one of the, the arguments I, I had uh, to uh, uh, ask for uh, getting rid of it. So we did it in uh, in 
but uh, maybe if we had it today, uh, maybe you could use it against the Quran burning, but uh, but uh, that Quran burning, it's, uh, you know, to defend the Christian in Pakistan uh, uh, are more important for me than uh, one or two or three people in Denmark, Sweden burned the Quran. Thank you. So on that note, Larry Greenberg asks, uh, will the Muslim world condemn desecration of Bibles and Torahs, etc.? Uh, sorry? Uh, will the Muslim world condemn desecration of Bibles and Torahs? And I have not seen anybody uh, do that. Uh, so, uh, but you know, the, the Danish society uh, didn't care. Uh, they said, oh, you can do it. It's, uh, we, we don't want to do, make trouble about it. Uh, so, and the, uh, the Jewish community in Denmark, they acted very uh, wise. Uh, they didn't uh, react. Uh, and I think uh, it was the right thing to do to ignore it. That's what the Muslims should do about the Quran burning, ignore it. Uh, as long as they get angry, people will burn more Qurans. Absolutely. Speaking of, I, I think I saw an article saying that there were uh, additional permits coming for book burnings in Sweden. Uh, does this make the, the Swedish government seem more complicit in this? And, and uh, how does that affect its NATO membership? Uh, you know, the, the Swedish government would love to be a member of NATO, uh, and they should be a member of NATO, and they will be a member of NATO, but they have to stand firm. Don't uh, compromise on your uh, values just to get into NATO. The only person who is against Sweden uh, being a member of NATO uh, is uh, Erdogan. Uh, but uh, I believe that the U.S. Uh, can uh, put pressure on Erdogan to accept it. Now Erdogan says that it's up to the Turkish uh, parliament uh, to uh, accept it, uh, but uh, he's the one who controls the parliament. Absolutely. So you mentioned back in 2006 that there was a... a, a you know, the worst worst uh, political crisis that uh, Denmark had seen in, in since World War II. Uh, do you think that this in Sweden would, would be similar or you did start off your uh, talk saying that you can't actually compare them, but do you, do you see more fallout coming? No, I, I think uh, the cartoon crisis in 2005 and six was uh, unique. Uh, it only happens one in a uh, hundred years because uh, then uh, the, the, you know, the OEC wanted a conflict. Uh, they like conflicts, but the Muslim countries uh, then in 2006, five and six, they wanted a conflict too, because they have a, had a lot of trouble uh, with their own opposition, you know, uh, a few years before, the Arab Spring. Uh, so then they needed uh, a foreign enemy. Uh, they don't do the same uh, now. You, we see our, you know, in offensive, but the different Muslim countries are, they don't want a new conflict. So I don't think we will get a conflict like uh, we, we had in 2006. And uh, when we see, uh, demonstrations in Iraq, uh, they are, you know, uh, there's internal uh, uh, issues uh, going on there. Uh, it's uh, uh, Murtada Sadr, who, it's his uh, people who do that, uh, and not the Iraqi government who ask people to do it. Thank you. Now, in regards, again, to, to NATO, that's, that's a pretty big issue. Um, so Finland was able to to get membership, but Sweden hasn't. What what exactly is the difference, and why why is uh, Turkey, Russia, all of that? They're they're all right with that. 
I think, uh, you know, Finland have uh, very few uh, people from Middle East uh, and foreigners compared to Sweden. So Sweden, they have a lot of uh, foreigners, uh, more than Denmark and Norway and uh, Finland. And they have a lot of uh, a huge uh, community of uh, Kurdish uh, people. And they, ha- they are in opposition to Erdogan. And uh, some of them are supporter of uh, PKA. Uh, and uh, Erdogan uh, has uh, many years asked uh, the Swedish, different Swedish government to uh, to go after the, Kurd, uh, the Kurdish uh, organizations in uh, Sweden, and Sweden uh, didn't respond. So now, uh, when they asked to be member of uh, after Ukraine uh, war, uh, to be member of uh, NATO, he, he can see an uh, opportunity uh, to go after the Kurdish in uh, in Sweden. Uh, you don't have the same amount of Kurdish in Finland. That's a fantastic point. Um, so short of going after the Kurdish in Sweden, what what do you think they should do? Uh, the Swedish government uh, had uh, made an agreement with Erdogan to go after those who, uh, the organization who are, who support violence. Uh, but not all uh, the Kurdish opposition. Uh, and he also asked them to uh, uh, expel uh, some of the Kurdish opposition uh, uh, people in Sweden. I think uh, they, uh, uh, I, I don't know, I think they said no, but maybe they can agree about they uh, do it with a few uh, people. Uh, I don't know the details. Uh, but he used uh, Erdogan used also uh, uh, this uh, crisis uh, to get uh, more from the EU. Uh, he said uh, he, uh, Turkey wants to be a member of uh, the EU. I don't believe it will uh, happen, but he wants a visa agreement with EU uh, to do it easier for the Turkish uh, citizens to get visa to the EU. So there's a lot of agenda going on uh, uh, beside uh, Sweden being a member of NATO. Absolutely. And if you were invited into parliament and asked, what should we do specifically? What what would your recommendations be? About? Uh, uh, Sweden and and the, the Quran burnings. Ignore it. Uh, it's not the Swedish government who orchestrated, who asked people to burn the Quran. It's uh, free people, uh, free individuals. That's what they want, and they they do it uh, as a part of freedom of expression. So the Muslim world should, uh, they should also have done it in 2006 with the cartoon. They should have ignored it. Uh, and say, so what? <laughs> you can draw whatever you want. And uh, now uh, the same, they should do the same. Uh, so uh, I really can't understand that uh, the Iraqi government uh, has sent the Swedish ambassador back to Sweden uh, because of the Quran burning. Uh, there's a lot of thing more important between Iraq and Sweden than this issue. They focus uh, too much uh, on this uh, issue. As I said uh, earlier, uh, I'm not for burning uh, any books. I don't like it. Uh, You should uh, read books and flash the idea you don't like in the books. Uh, But uh, people do it, some few people do it, and uh, that's uh, their right to do it, uh, and we should ignore it. And don't blame the Danish government and the Swedish government for it. But I think the Arab media, they do a lot to uh, to exaggerate what, uh, what's going on. And uh, they almost say that's uh, orchestrated by the Danish and the Swedish governments 
as part of their Islamophobia, and that's not true. Absolutely, and what a fantastic point to leave us with. You know, this goes so much further than just the Quran burnings. It's a geopolitical background that we we just uh, don't have time to completely uncover in this webinar. All right, so before we go, can you please tell us, our viewers, where we can find some more of your work? Uh, yes, you can uh, find it on uh, the Google. <laughs> you can find some of my work on in English on uh, Hudson Institute's uh, website. Uh, but most of my writings are in Danish. Uh, but I have uh, some interviews and uh, a lot of article in English. All right, wonderful. We've come to the close you of can our follow me on, And you can follow me on my Facebook NASA, Carter, Denmark. Uh, there's a lot of debate on the Facebook, sometimes in English. Oh, that's always very interesting to, to look into. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Carter, for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, all. Of thank course. You. For our viewers, please be on the lookout for our weekly webinar offerings email coming out over the weekend. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.